Hey everybody, this is Wendy. This is Wendy's Prairie to Perfume. Here I just talk about perfume. This is going to be one of my last videos for the year. I got a little bit of time today and I've been kind of thinking about things, you know. Um, today I'm going to do the best of 22 for me. And that doesn't mean that these are the absolute best or these are the absolute favorites or these are even my most worn. But these are some perfumes that I've found for myself in 2022. Either um, I'm late to the party and everybody has already been there, done that, or they've been on my shelf for a few years and I've maybe worn them here or there, but now they've kind of solidified themselves as a perfume that I really want to be in my rotation on the permanent or I have just gotten them or I've been neglecting them and you know there's all sorts of things happening on my perfume shelf so let's just get started I think I will start with the obvious um I buy a lot of designers I wear a lot of designers um because because that's what I do and the designer perfume that I have really enjoyed wearing this summer this is more of a spring and summertime perfume as Gucci Guilty and Eau de Toilette so even though that box is kind of simple, I don't know. Black is always nice. Black and rose gold are pretty good um, combination. So um, there's the bottle. This perfume has been around for a long time. It's been a few around. It's had a few formulations. It's have a few incarnation. It has a lot of flankers, but I like the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Toilette is a lot of lilac. It's a beautiful floral um, with pink pepper, and it's just. It's just very pretty feminine and very easy to wear. And I really love wearing it in the spring and the summer and I get great wear out of it. And this is definitely going to be in my rotation and on my shelf forever. So thank you, Gucci Guilty and Eau de Toilette. Uh, this one is having a heyday from 2019. This is Valentina Donna, born in Roma. I feel like I've mentioned this a lot. I think I'm going to make a little resolution next year to not mention this. I'm probably never going to do a review because there's a million and a half reviews. Um, done on this scent. This is versatile, also very pretty, also very designer smelling, also very sweet, woody, jasmine, glyc wood, um, easy to wear, but wears fantastically. I, I got this in last winter, um, in the beginning of 22, and I am so, so lucky to have it. And I am so, so lucky that it is on my shelf. And I'm so, so lucky that um, it came into my life. So I really like wearing Valentino Donna. Um, this is kind of one that I wear spring, summer, fall, winter. It kind of is one of those all seasons, uh, four season perfumes. And uh, I really liked having this too this year. So that's gotten a lot of wear for me from Valentino Donna. Is it annoying that I take the box out? I tend to keep my perfumes in a box unless I'm wearing them day after day after day. But eh, it's my parade. I can do whatever I want. The last one, um, I kind of ignored this one for a long time, but... I finally got a Chloe Nomad on my shelf, and I have a mini of the Eau de Parfum, but the one I really like and I was surprised is the Eau de Toilette. Um, oof. This one has a lot of like freesia. This is the freesia one that has the Mirabelle Plum. This has the Oak Moss Dry Down. This is a modern Chipra. It's very easy to wear. It's not going to be like aromatics elixir or anything. But as far as the um, the Chloe Nomads go, I like this one. I have a bottle of the Nomad Absolute also um, because I am a perfume addict and I had I just have so many perfumes that I, I get them and I don't get to know them very well. But this I've worn um, off and on this year and this one is the one I like the most so far. So I am on the train back in the saddle for Chloe Nomad, but in the Eau de This one's really classy and pretty too. It's kind of like the Gucci Guilty. I like that one. Um, these next two, pu two perfumes, um, well, I'll just get them on here. They're both my lavender perfumes for this year. I'm really loving Lush, Lush Shade. I always want to say Lush Lust because that's like a tongue twister. And that's what I always think of when I think of the company. I always think of their Lust perfume. But this is Shade. This is very herbal. This is very essential oil smelling and organic smelling. It has like, it's like a lavender for share. Um, it has lavender, obviously. It has sandalwood. It has guaiac wood. It has um, olibanum as like a resin. It's, I really like it. I really liked wearing it this year. And another... Perfume discovery. This is pretty new though. I think this is either from this year or last year, but 
Another discovery um, perfume I've had on my shelf this year is Lush Shade. I'm just going to tell you right now, I feel like I'm just going to be naming them and not going into them very much today. I just worked all weekend, Christmas weekend. I'm just kind of tired, but I just want to talk about these. This is very new to my shelf. This, this, see, I'm tired, man. This, uh, I shouldn't even be talking today. You guys, you know, I am unsupported and unmonetized. So you'll just have to listen to all my not being able to talk. But in exchange, you don't have to listen to any commercials. So anyway, this is from Lelique. Beautiful Lelique bottle because they're the glass company. Um, this is Living Lelique. This perfume is kind of funny because this, when it came out, was like $125, $150. And then it went through this period of time where it was like being given away on the gray market. And it was like $25. Now the price is creeping up and this is starting to disappear. I got this for about... 35 40 bucks this year i really wanted it because this is a lavender iris perfume and if for anyone out there that likes to perfume prada infusion duris this reminds me of infusion duris but um, a hefty load of of lavender added so this also is a very like unsweetened herbal floral you know rooty iris root scent that kind of dries down to a I mean this in a nice way, but cashmere is a synthetic woody aroma chemical, but it has that like woody, soft, musky dry down. So this is a woody floral musk along the lines of Infusion Diaries, but with added lavender. And this is Lelique, Living Lelique. You still may be able to get this on, this is a 100 ml bottle. You still may be able to get this on the gray market for like 30 bucks, but I, but not for long. So those are my two lavenders. This one I've talked about a few times on this channel just because I'm so pleased with it. This is a Banana Republic perfume and this is Malachite and this is on my shelf for a few years and I would wear it here and there but this summer especially this has turned into a staple. This is a this is an aquatic green floral and when I say aquatic I don't mean those horrible fake sea spray cologne like cologne as in C A L O N E I don't mean those. I mean like you're in a mystical swamp bog lily pads how about that <laughs> a br fresh water flowing through a rocky brook leading to a lagoon with lily pads on it and it smells green and it smells floral and there's like water hyacinths and it's just clean and refreshing and green and slightly soapy too but this is really really pretty also uh this is still 25 bucks 20 or 25 dollars um where it's absolutely beautiful in the spring and summer i lovely green floral and but i love it and it's a staple I wore this, I wore the heck out of this this summer. So that is, Ru uh, sorry, it's not Rouge Malachi. Jeez, that's a whole other, I don't even have that perfume. Why did I say that? Y'all have to bear with me today. Anyway, this is Malachite from Banana Republic. I only have a couple more left. So y'all have to bear with me a little bit longer. These are my perfumes that have been on my shelf and I have either been neglecting them or I tried them once and then I like forgot about it for a long time. I have a crazy shelf. I'm not kidding. This one is from um, Terry Mugler. This is when they were doing that Miroir series. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, this one is Miroir Velopt. And it's supposed to be a Oud Rose. I don't really think it's an Oud Rose. Um, this is really sweet and honeyed. It smells like honeyed... Um, heliotrope and like honeyed jasmine flowers over like lots of tobacco like honey tobacco and there's a lot of patchouli in it though and it, the interesting thing about this is that i this is like terry mugler patchouli which is dark and masculine and and scary underneath these hugely sweet notes so i'm guessing it is a little bit the way angel used to be with like the cotton candy sweetness on top of very masculine patchouli so this is like honey and sweetness and um sweet tobacco and yes there's woods and yes there's everything else but it, it they do a really fantastic job of this of you know the balance between extremely sweet notes and extremely dark notes like you know tobacco woods patchoulis and honeyed sweet flowers again this is supposed to be an oud rose i do not find this oudy yes it's woody yes it's dark it's not oudy though and the do the dominant florals are not rose they are heliotrope and jasmine so that is miroir de Velopes. i don't know if that's going to come out 
There you go. Um, I have no idea when I got this. I'm not the only one that does this. Okay, I was probably on FragranceNet a couple years ago whenever they were dumping this on the gray market and I probably saw this for 38 bucks and I probably looked at the notes and I was like, sure, I'll try a nude rose. And there it sat ever since then. I know that's exactly what happened. I do not even know when I got this. But anyway, I rediscovered it. I've worn it a few times over the last couple of months and I've really liked it and I'm going to continue wearing it this winter. This one I used to wear a fair amount um, and I just brought it out for my 10-year club. This is Grass Cabochard. This is another one that is unlike this. This is not hard to wear because it's so sweet, but this is a little bit, a little bit more than that. This is a very easy to wear rose and patchouli perfume, which that sounds like it would be heavy, but it's not. This is a nearly perfectly composed composition of rose, incense, and patchouli, and I can't believe that I've ignored it for so long, so I'm glad to have it back. Um, another perfume I've been wearing this year a lot is from Shiseido. This is really old and really discontinued, but this is the original template for... Feminite Dubois, you can't really see it on the bottle, but on the box, this is the, this is, what is on the shelf now in the store is, or online, is Serge Luton's Feminite Dubois, which is like a, a woody fruity, and I had a bottle of the Serge Luton's version, and I just never really loved it. It was a little screechy. Um, the cedar was just a little bit too bright and it just didn't do enough. This, however, this is like, this is the real deal. I don't know why they can't make it like this anymore. Um, this is like plum, stewed plum and spices on a bed of sandalwood and cedar. And I can even wear this in the summer because even though that sounds like it'd be really strong, it's very mellow. It's like all mellowed together. And it's just this beautiful, spicy, woody, fruity perfume. And I really love this. Um, this is another one that I got and I ignored it, but I'm glad that I finally got my act together and started wearing it this year. So this is another find from my shelf for 2022 is uh, Shiseido Feminite Dubois. Um, I'm sorry that I know some people on some channels are like, I don't talk about things that are discontinued, but like half my shelf is discontinued. So I apologize. So those are my definitely from my collection that I just have not um, paid fair attention to this year. So the last three, um, I have two Guerlain's and then I have two from 2022. We'll end on those. I just did a review for this recently. This is Guerlain Patchouli Ardente. I'll just get out the bottle since the bottle is pretty. It's beautiful, saturated royal blue bottle. Patchouli Ardente. Um, I just did a review for this a month ago. Beautiful Woody Rose. This is all this is all rose some patchouli they should have called it rose ardent but uh really glad to have this this is very available on the gray market for like a hundred dollars less than retail right now and i've enjoyed wearing it let's just move on to the next one. Oh dear this was my birthday present to myself this has been kind of contentious um this is from this year a lot of people were disappointed with this Maybe I'll do a quick review on it, um, but the, the consensus seems to be that people don't like it. And what I'm talking about is Misty or Rose Essence. Um, the whole shtick with this is that this is one of um, Francis uh, de Mache's last perfumes that he was going to make for Dior. And they were also getting the rose, um, the rose water and the rose oil from this specific company, and this specific farm in France where they they grow roses and they harvest them for perfume distillation. I think people thought that this was going to be really strong because it has the word essence in it. And I think people thought it was going to be really sweet and bright because it's pink. Um, I don't feel like Dior was trying to trick anybody because if you take a four second glance at the notes, the notes include dark woody notes like um, guaiac wood and patchouli. So... This to me, here's the thing, this does smell really natural. And to me, this miss, this hits the mark because it was advertised as a natural perfume and natural perfumes don't actually always last that long. They can be a little bit fleeting. They can be a little bit light. Um, the essential oils can kind of just 
they can just degrade and faster. They're not going to be sticking to your skin, skin as long as something that's synthetic and heavier. And that's just going to be like attached to you for the whole day. That's why, you know, Ambroxan and Isoe Super, you know, they just stick on you all day. This to me does smell. I think this is so pretty. To me, this smells very pretty and very natural and very as advertised. This to me, when on my skin, this is like a rose incense perfume and yes it dries down it's dark it's guayac wood and patchouli not scary uh this is not terry terry mugler patchouli like dark like that but still it's patchouli it's not candied um it's not sweet the rose adds a little bit of sweetness the natural sweetness that it has but at the time um this isn't insanely priced maybe for the and yes the only thing the problem with this is that this really does only last a couple of hours it's a, it's like a rose water cologne, even though it says it's an eau de toilette. This was my birthday present though. This exceeded my expectations as far as how natural and pretty it smelled. And I actually tend to like woody incense rose perfume. So this hit the mark for me, but it's not going to hit the mark for everybody else. And I have enjoyed wearing this this year. So this is from Dior. This is Miss Dior Rose Essence. Okay. My last one. I don't even deserve to have this perfume. This is another one that's a little contentious and not everybody likes it. Um, this is why I just don't even need to buy anything next year. I can just stop because I do have a bottle of, I hate the name though. Do I even have to say it? Oud Nude. I don't like that name. It's so dumb. We're just gonna call it Guerlain Oud since you know what I'm talking about. Now, if you want to talk about incense rose, this is like an incense rose surrounded by vanilla and almond and cherries with vanilla, vanilla and woods in the background and, and yes, oud, but the, the woods and the, in, oh my gosh, I need to do a review on this one, but I'm not even going to like try too much to describe what this smells like, but this is like my ultimate dark Dark and desserty, yet woody and beautiful rose. I really like this. I'm really glad. I'm really glad I have this. This, I'm very blessed to have it. So, um, this is rounding out. This is from 2022. This gets 10 stars from me, but there are a lot of people say that they hate this and that Guerlain sucks and they're putting out awful perfumes and, you know, that's fine. That's not what I think, though. I really like this one. Maybe I'll try to do a review on that. And I'll have more time because I'm not going to be buying anything. My no buy is going really good. It's been like a couple of weeks. That shows you what an addict I am. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, I haven't bought a perfume in a couple of weeks. That's really good. But um, so new to my shelf, happy to be wearing. I've only got this like a month or two ago. Um, this only came into my life a month or two ago. So and I love it so much. Okay. Y'all have to forgive me. I'm a little bit tired. This is like my one day off. I have to work so much over the holidays, but um, I just wanted to get this done for 2022. So if you stuck with me and my rambling and my garbling and my not describing things very well, I appreciate it. And let me know what's what's been working for you in 2022, whether you've had it on your shelf for years and you've rediscovered it or you got it this year or you're late to the party like I am, like uh, with half the stuff. <laughs> But let me know. And this is Wendy's Parade. We're on to Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to y'all. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.